Okay, um, new day, new video. I thought I'd try a new angle. I've got the natural light coming in from this side, so it's probably going to be it's going to look a lot brighter and a lot better. So, okay, let's talk about another story. This time it's about um, our competition in Tianjin, and I want to talk about it because, well, actually, there's a lot to talk about. So let's just get to it. Okay. In 2018, we went to Tianjin in the north of China to compete. This is out of the way for us because normally we only go to the south of China, to Zhejiang and that area, kind of. But right now, we went to the north. Why? Well, let me first tell you what kind of form I did. We competed in several different forms, categories. Um, I did a fist form and I did a staff form. And the staff form is... Uh, Special. The fist form is the same one as I described in the last video. It's the um, it's the dice of the kauda, but the staff form is another tolifat form that I did not discuss yet. So it's the dan gap seung. Dan gap seung means single combined with double. Why does it? What a strange name, right? Why is it called that? Because in Chinese star fighting, at least southern Chinese star fighting, you have two main concepts main um, modices of fighting. So you've got the long pole, the dan tao guan, the single headed staff, and you use it um, to poke people with. So basically, if I take this pen as an example, you hold the staff at the very end and nothing pokes out at the back. So you maximize the range you, you're going to have, right? And with uh, with this kind of fighting, you use the range uh, to to your advantage. You poke, you stab, you lunge, and um, you attack the extremities, the wrists and and the legs. With the sheng tao guan, a double one, it's different. Basically, if these are my hands, if my fingers are my hands, you hold the staff like this, and you can attack with both ends of the staff right and you can poke you can poke with both ends you can come from the side the bottom and the sides right so it's a very different kind of uh, style of fighting because this one is uh, it doesn't utilize um, the range instead it tries to shorten uh, the distance to deliver uh, more high risk attacks but also very devastating attacks and this form it specializes in combining the two ideas into one so at times I'll be holding it like this, using both ends, and other times I'll be holding it like this, using it like a spear. Basically, that's the main difference. And I love this form. It's great. It's uh, very physical. It's very strong. It's very powerful. But on, on the other uh, on the on the other hand, it's also quite um, short, so you don't get tired very easily with this form. Um, yeah. So. That brings me to Tianjin and why we went there to perform. We are part of the Qinwu Athletic Association. And what is special about the Qinwu Athletic Association? Well, let me tell you. Qinwu is a very famous name in China. Because there are there were several movies in China made and they were called Jingwu Men. Uh, famous movie makers, such as a famous actor such as Jet Li. Bruce Lee and even Stephen Chow made films about this organization. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I've seen all these Jet Li's movies. Which, which one are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about Fearless. Um, and, and Bruce Lee had uh, the, the Fist of Fury. Uh, these were all about Jingwu. Um, and Jet Li's film is especially important um, because he plays and he portrays the character known as Huo Yuanjia. And Huo Yuanjia is actually um, the spiritual father of the Qinwu Athletic Association. And if it was just any old Kung Fu school, if it was just any other style, it wouldn't have been so important. But Qinwu is more than just a style. Qinwu is one of the organizations from Republican China that changed the face of Chinese martial arts forever. Because before the Republican age, before the Chinese Central Martial Arts Institute, the Zhongyang Guoshu Guan, and before the Qinwu organization, uh, Jingwu Hui, 
there was Chinese martial arts and it was kind of vague. So people like Tang Hao, um, in the Republican age, they endeavored to um, codify and to uh, organize the martial arts. So distinctions like internal and external martial arts is actually um, done by scholars like Tang Hao. And it was done in that same era where the Chinese Martial Arts Institute and also the Jing Wu Hui were established. So it's very important. And its spiritual father is Huo Yanjia. So again, I didn't tell you why we went to Tianjin for that. Huo Yanjia, as it would happen, was born in Tianjin. He's a Tianjin native. And his tomb, his, his uh, memorial kind of uh, place is also in Tianjin. And as it would happen in Tianjin, there is also a Qinwu organization. And 2018 was the year, uh, was the 100th anniversary of uh, Huo Yanjia's death date. So basically 100 years since his passing. So we went there to celebrate his life. And what better way to celebrate the life of a renowned martial artist than to organize a martial arts competition. For me, it was a great honor to have been able to perform um, at such an event. And I, I'm quite happy to have performed there because it's such a, a significant event in Chinese martial arts history, without this man, probably we wouldn't have been doing Chinese martial arts because it wouldn't have been popularized under the Chinese people. And if it wasn't popular under the Chinese people, well, probably all those vi uh, films wouldn't have been made and there would have been no um, demand for it in Europe or in uh, outside of China at all. So I'm deeply grateful to this man and um, I hope more people learn of him and I hope that you've learned something from this video. So, having said all that, let's take a look at my form. Um, you can say how well I did. I think I did pretty pretty well. I did make a few mistakes here and there. For example, I um, when I turned around, my foot wasn't as stable as it should have been. But still, uh, I got gold performance for this, so I'm quite happy. Okay. Peace. Uh -huh.